Okay, so um, we'll talk about the, the RF basic concepts today. The things that we will cover are listed here. We have already mentioned this to you last time, so we'll discuss just some, some general considerations. Might look boring at the beginning, so dB scale, how to convert from voltage gain to power gain, they will eventually become the same thing. Uh, how to convert from dB back to uh, absolute gains and so on. And then we will talk about the uh, linearity and time invariance of a system. And then we will start discussing the core of the stuff, which is non-linearity noise. The last part, which is sensitivity, is a short part, and it relies a lot on the previous ones. Most of the time, we will spend it in, in this part. We will spend it do, talking about the non-linearity. It has the most drastic effect on uh, RF design circuits. Um, again, we are not covering all of this today. This is going to be covered across uh, three lectures. So today, next time, and the time after, maybe two and a half if we move a little bit faster. Uh, units, reminder, you can calculate gains. What's the definition of a gain? It's a value divided by a value of the same unit. So it's V out divided by Vn, or power at the output divided by power at the input, and that's the gain. Gain is typically without units, because you divide something with a particular unit on another value, which is the same unit. So gain does not have units. However, when we calculate the gain in what we call the dB, we put what looks like a unit beside it. It's not actually a unit. It's just a scale representation. So when we say the gain is 5 dB, it doesn't mean that this is a unit of measurement. It's just a scale over which we are measuring the gain, which does not really have units. Okay. Now, as you learned in your circuits course, you can calculate a voltage gain, which has been given to you as per the definition, the output voltage divided by the input voltage. And then if you want to calculate that in dB scale, in logarithmic scale, then you take the log to the base 10 and you multiply that by 20. And we call that the voltage gain in dB. Okay. Also, at some point, you have been discussing the power gain, so the output power divided by the input power of your system. right? And then if you want to represent that again in dB scale, you take the log to the base 10, but this time you multiply by 10 only. We call that the voltage, the power gain in dB scale. Okay. Now the next few steps just shows you that whether you calculate the gain using the power or the voltage in dB scale, you should get exactly the same value, right? And the reason for that is the power. If you represent the power in the very famous relation of voltage squared divided by the resistance, then replace P out and P n uh, with their voltage over resistance representation, you end up with 10 log V square out over V square N, and then the square can go outside, it becomes 20 log V out V N. This is exactly the same as the definition that you had to the voltage gain. So we expect that if you calculate power gain in dB scale, you should get exactly the same as someone who's doing voltage gain in dB scale. You should get exactly the same value. Question here. And I want you to try to solve it every two, three together. And then we discuss the solution. An amplifier senses a sinusoidal signal and delivers a power of 0 dBm. Right? To a load resistance of 50 ohm, determine the peak to peak voltage swing across the load resistance. Okay? The question uh, first is going to be, what's a dBm scale? So let me explain that. Now, as opposed to the dB scale, the dBm scale has units. It's not a unitless measurement. Okay? Even though, in the physical sense, it's a unitless measurement. Okay, so I'll explain what I mean by that. Okay? So uh, dBm is defined as so power in dBm is equal to 10 log the power in watts divided by 1 milliwatt, right? So that 1 milliwatt, you can say 10 to the minus 3 watt as well. Okay. So 
So again, in terms of units, you have watts divided by watts, so you get a, a, like a unitless output. But in terms of the actual physical representation, you are representing an absolute value using um, again scale value. Okay? Because when you say, for example, the power is 10 dBm, this represents an actual power with units, with watt units. But it's just represented in a ratio way, in a uh, unitless graph with dB scale. Okay? Why we do this? Because it allows, and we, as we will see in the next example, it allows the calculations in typical circuits where you have amplifications and losses and stuff like that. It becomes much easier to do the calculations in dB scale as opposed to doing the calculations in the absolute scale. So this is the definition of a dBm uh, measurement of power. And of course, you can reverse that to get the power in watts given the power in dBm. So what's going to be the power in watts given the power in dBm? 10 to the power of uh, power hmm. dB over 10. Yes, 10 to the power of the power in dBm. Hmm. Divided by 10. Yes, multiplied by 10 to the minus 3. Huh? So that's going to be your power in what? Right? Just reverse the equation. Similarly, up there you can calculate also the gains in absolute value as opposed to the gains in um, dB value. Okay? So the question says, let's go back to any questions here about the dBm representation and the um, uh, absolute dB and all these things. Trivial stuff, right? So let's go to this. An amplifier senses the sinusoidal signal and delivers a power of 0 dBm to a load resistance of 50 ohm. Determine the peak to peak voltage swing across the load resistor. Let's try to calculate that. No. I don't want a value, I want a methodology. Yani try to tell me what's going to be the steps to calculate this. Paper will start with Well, we have only like one minute or let's say 90 seconds to do this. If <laughs> Okay, so you have the solution for this one. It's up there. Recording wave show, Okay, so another example a GSM. Now I want you to try this example in two stages. Stage Al Awalani, just try to draw a block diagram. Typically, an amplifier in a block diagram is represented by triangle keda, well, tip is the output of the amplifier, well, input is going to the base of the triangle. Tamam? A GSM receiver senses a narrow band modulated signal. Which mohim? Doesn't matter. Eventually, it's some signal and it is modulated, so it has some sinusoid to it. Tamam? And typically, for narrow band modulated signals, it's a sinusoid with slight variation. We can assume in the power betaitna is the power of the sinusoid. Most of the power is carried actually in the sinusoidal signal itself. Tamam? We don't care about the small variations caused by the signal uh, doing the amplitude modulation. Anyways, so what you care about is this is a signal going into um, a uh, 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 GSM receiver, and the signal has a level of minus 100 dBm. So this is the power of the signal coming to the receiver, the GSM receiver. Tamam? If the front end amplifier, اللي هو اللي دخل عليه signal, أول amplifier اللي تقابله signal, provides a voltage gain of 15 dB. تمام? Calculate the peak to peak voltage swing at the output of the amplifier. يلا. تدو كده رسمه بس وفين power اللي دخل على الانبوت شكلها ايه وفي ايه اللي انا عايز احسبه في الاوتبوت وبعدين بعد كده do the calculation. So first step just try to draw a block diagram for this circuit. A block diagram should take you 10 to 15 seconds وبعدين بعد كده solution should take you مثلا one minute ولا حاجة. To figure out the number of them. So the solution for this is going to be our haga just in all these problems from now on. If there is a description of something going to the input, something going to the output, and so on, try to draw a block diagram of the problem. And otherwise, the solution you're gonna be confused where to get the solution. This is a very simple block diagram. But later, it will become more complicated. Things will become more complicated. Tamam? So 
we have an amplifier. Amplifier has 15 dB gain. And we have an input to this amplifier. The input is minus 100 dBm. تمام? And the output from the amplifier is something that I don't know. Didn't mention what's the output. However, it's asking me to, for the V peak peak of the out. تمام? That's the question. And I know that for a sinusoidal signal, if I can figure out the power, I can figure out the amplitude. صح? The average power of a sinusoid signal is... What's the average power of a sinusoidal signal? Amplitude square على 2. Amplitude square divided by 2. مظبوط? Half the amplitude square of the signal. تمام? So, what I need to figure out is what's the output power, and then from that output power, I'll be able to figure out the amplitude, and from the amplitude, I will be able to figure out the peak-to-peak -peak voltage. تمام? There is no load here consuming this. So the question is, is there a power delivered? No, this is just a power that might be delivered to a particular load. تمام? So at this stage, we are talking about an amplifier, and we assume that there is some fictitious load that's going to use that power. But there is nothing, because it's not really connected to a load. It doesn't mention anything about a load connected to it. So the calculation here is going to be, if a load is connected, then it's going to deliver this amount of power. خلاص? That's why we don't need the resistor or the load or anything in this stage. Because we are just calculating the capability of this amplifier to deliver a certain power if it was connected to a load. خلاص? So minus 100 dBm and you have a gain of dB. Now you have two ways to do the calculation here. Convert everything to absolute and then do the calculation. If I take the minus 100 dBm, I convert it to absolute what value. But then I, could, I take a gain, which is in dB scale, and I convert that to absolute scale, the lower power on output divided on power over the input. And then accordingly, I can calculate the output power. But this way, you lost the gain of using dB scale in the first place. The other option is, in dB scale, when you go through things that have certain gain, whether it's positive or negative, يعني معنى gain or loss, you just add the dB values. تمام? So simply the power in the output in dBm, power out in dBm, is equal to the minus 100 in dBm. I know the power in the output is dBm because the input is dBm. So and in, mid, in, the, in, the, in between, there are only unitlets gains, Masbut. So again, the output is going to have the same units at the input because there are unitless gains in the middle. Amen? So the power in the output in dBm is equal to the power in the input in dBm, which is the minus 100, the power in in dBm. Huh? Added to it, the gain. Okay. 15. That's the gain. Huh? And you put everything with the sign. Like if someone tells you that there's a component here that has a gain which is negative, this is a component causing losses. Just put it as it is. Minus 1 dB, hotah minus 1 dB. Plus 10 dB, hotah plus 10 dB. Alright? So you put everything with its, with its sign. The result is going to be what? So the power in the output in dBm is minus 85 dBm. Amen? Now I need to convert, in order to get the voltage peak to peak, I need to convert back to power, absolute power units. So then after that, I'll get the voltage. Amen? So minus 85, يعني, the power in the output is equal to 10 to the minus 11.5 in what? كلام ده صح ولا غلط? Ah, the رقم ده بس ده صح الأول ولا? Where did I get this from? 11.5. Ah, هو 85 dBm. You have to divide it by 10. فطلع لك 8.5 مظبوط؟ وبعدين يو مالتبلاي باي 10 تو ذا ماينس 3 اللي هو مالتبلاي باي احنا قلنا 10 تو ذا باور اوف ذا دي بي ام وبعدين بعد كده مالتبلاي باي 10 تو ذا ماينس 3 مظبوط؟ فهي 10 تو ذا باور ماينس 8.5 مالتبلاي باي 10 تو ذا ماينس 3 ات بيكمز 10 تو ذا ماينس 11.5 مظبوط؟ انا هكتبها. اوكي ذيس كمز فروم 10 تو ذا ماينس 8.5 مالتبلاي باي 10 to the minus 3. تمام؟ ده من this this is from the equation that we already wrote a couple of slides ago. 
ان الباور ان وات از ايكوال تو ذا باور ان دي بي ام تمام مقسومه على ديفايدد باي 10 اند ذن ريز تو ذا 10 تو ذا باور اوف ذات نمبر اند ذن يو مالتيبلاي باي 10 تو ذا ماينس 3 اوكي So this becomes this. This is the output power. Now you need to convert this into v peak to peak. How do you do that? So the way to convert power uh, to voltage peak to peak is that we have to assume a certain output resistance or resistance where this power is taken across. Typically, we assume a 50 ohm. So typically, we assume a 50 ohm output impedance the typical one for rf then the power that we have p out is equal to v square over r and the v here is the rms voltage and we know that the rms value is equal to the peak value divided by root 2 so now we have this relation that p out is equal to v peak over root 2 all squared divided by r this is 50 so it's equal to v peak squared divided by 2 times 50 so now we have 10 to the minus 11.5 that's the total power is equal to the VP power, right? Squared divided by ti 2 times 50, which is 100. This leads to V peak equal to the root of 10 to the minus 11.5 multiplied by 100. So that's multiplied by 10 to the power 2. So it becomes 10 to the power minus 9.5 under the root right um, and that's vp now v peak peak v peak to peak is equal to double that so v p p is equal to 2 the peak value which is equal to 2 times the root of 10 to the minus 9.5 okay uh, you can check the numbers with the next slide uh, which has the solution and the numbers right one thing to observe carefully is that we cannot use in solving this problem the relation that you got used to in signals and systems which is which says that uh, i will write it in a different color so you notice that the relation that says that the power of a sinusoid right is equal to half square the amplitude of the sinusoid Again, this relation is a rough relation. Reality is this relation says that the power contained in a sinusoid is proportional to this value, but it's not exactly. Here we want to get an exact voltage out of an exact power, then we need an actual load resistance. So we assume an output load resistance equal to 50 ohm and solve accordingly. And this assumption happens in many of the RF electronic circuits unless we know that the circuit is designed for a different matching impedance or a different characteristic impedance of the design. Okay, uh, So just keep in mind that this approach will not give you a correct answer. Okay, uh, Even though we might have mistakenly done this here or there uh, in this course, but the reality is you can only calculate the voltage from the power using the relation um, that the power is equal to voltage squared divided by resistance or power is equal to current squared multiplied by resistance and so on so you cannot calculate voltage unless you assume a certain load uh, at the output or the input or whatever you are calculating that voltage from power okay so the same thing that we did here you can see the solution actually of the example here with the exact numbers you can review the numbers versus this uh, solution uh, and then proceed to the So, um, linearity and time invariance. We start by discussing, first of all, before going into that, any questions about the previous stuff that we solved so far? It should be simple, yeah. you might make a mistake in numbers, but it should be, methodology is straightforward. Well, things that you've studied many times before. Linearity and time invariance is two properties that you studied in your signals and systems. These are two system properties. Tamam? A system is... Linear, if, let's say the first mathematical definition, 
if it satisfies this relation. What does this relation say? It says that if you go to that system and you put some input, x1, and you measure the output, you find the output y1, okay? You go and put another different input, x2, and you measure the output, you find the output something else called y2, remember? Now, if you go to the same system and you put a linear combination of those two, sorry, a linear combination of those two inputs, so you put x1 scaled by a factor, added to it x2 scaled by another factor, then the output should be those two outputs scaled with the same factors and added together. If the system satisfies this, then this is a linear system. Amen? Sometimes I represent this by a toy uh, explanation just for uh, the sake of clarity. If I go to this system and I put, maybe I put as an input a square to the system. And I measure the output, I find that the system produces a triangle. Tamam? Okay? I go to the same system and I put some other input and let's say that that input is a circle. And I measure the output from the system, I find the system producing a star. Yeah, that's what happened. Tamam? I put this input, I measure the output, it's a triangle. Put that one, I measure the output, it's a star. I go to the same system, right? And I put at the input a scaled factor of the square and the circle. This is scaled by A1, or this is scaled by A2, we add it together. And I measure the output from this system, I should find what? A1 multiplied by the triangle plus A2 or B multiplied by the star, right? So basically, system maintains the shapes of everything um, and just scales it up and down as you scale the input up and down. And if you add two things together, it adds them together. Um, that's simply a linear system. Fine. What's a time invariant system? A time invariant system is a system where if you shift the input, the output stays the same in terms of the look, but it's only shifted exactly the same way. This is called a time invariant system. So if the input to that system is x of t, and that x of t produces some output y of t, go back to the example of the square and triangle and stuff, then if you go to the input and shift the input, you will find the output exactly the same, but shifted the same way. Amen? This is called a time invariant system. What's the advantage of a linear and time invariant system? The advantage is it's very easy to predict the output knowing the impulse. Or, in a more advanced way, knowing the impulse response of the system. Now I looked at us two already from the signals and systems. We're not going to go into the math, but the important part is to understand the concept of linearity and the concept of time invariance. Time. What happens if, yes, I will come, come back to your question. What happens if we lose one of those two properties? Bad stuff happens. Amen? We will see them in the coming few slides. If you lose this property or if you lose this property, the signal at the output behaves in a very unpredictable way. Amen? And we'll see that as we go through. What's your question? How is this useful in RF electronics? How is this useful in RF electronics? We will find that when we are using RF electronic components, unfortunately, they are not ideal. And because of non-idealities there, they are neither linear nor time invariant. They are bad, and bad stuff happens, right? But we can find that for a particular design, you can work within a certain range of signal input or frequency input, like certain properties, such that you maintain very close behavior to linearity and very close behavior to time invariant. The rest, I mean, things outside that range, if you have to deal with them, then you have to figure out how to compensate for the nonlinearity effect and how to avoid the non-time the non invariant or the time varying property of the signal, of the system, sorry. Tamam? Okay. Good question. Very good question. Okay? So let's move on and check Kida if you understood linearity and time invariance. And by the way, as I as I mentioned typically in this slide, okay, try here. So the, the, the system that you see over here is composed of two input voltages, Vn1, Vn2, and an output measured across resistance R1. And Vn1 is controlling a switch. That's the only thing it does to this circuit. 
what is this control or what's the behavior of this control? If the input voltage Vn1 is positive, the switch is closed. If the input voltage Vn1 is negative, the switch is open. Okay? Couple of questions. Each question could be answered by one person. One person. Uh -huh. If Vn1 is positive, what's going to be the value of V out? One person answer. Hmm. Vn2. Tamam. If Vn1 is negative, what's going to be the value of V output? Zero. 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 And we call this pull down resistance. Right? Mm -hmm. The resistance, if you don't connect anything to it, it's connected to the ground from the other side. So if you disconnect the other terminal, the output is going to be directly the ground. No current, nothing. Yeah. Will we later replace Vn1 with an oscillator? Uh, we will replace it with many things depending on whether we are designing a mixer or designing an amplifier or design each one of those has a control in addition to an input signal yeah? so it will be replaced with multiple things yes that's a good guess for the future yeah? okay now let's consider this system from two perspectives one engineer is studying only the input output behavior between vn1 and v out so the system, I can control Vn1, and I can measure V out. Vn2 is fixed. It's inside, closed inside a black box. I don't have access to it, so it has some fixed value. Fixed, uh, it has to be constant. Fixed, maybe sinusoid, but I cannot value its parameters. It's fixed. Sinusoid that stays like it, like it is forever. Amen? So this is one system. And the other system is, I can control Vn2 only, and I do not control Vn1, it's inside the black box of the system, and I can measure the output. Amen? So the first system is Vn1 versus V out, and the second system is Vn2 versus V out. Can you check? And I don't want you to try to check mathematically. You can do mathematical check, but that's going to take a longer time. Can you check it logically? Which one? of this system. Let's start by the first one. Is it linear or not? Is it time varying or not? And then let's go to the second system and see is it linear or not? Is it time varying or not? Yeah. Try to imagine the behavior and to simplify things for you, simply assume that Vn1 and Vn2 are cosine functions. Tamam? That's a simple example. Yani try to solve this or to figure out the linearity and the time invariance using sinusoid functions only. They have two different frequencies, omega 2, omega 1, with two different amplitudes. Amen? And try to think, in this case, is this system as a relation between Vn1 and V out? Is it going to be linear or not? Is it going to be time varying or not? Similarly, as a relation between Vn2 and V out, is it linear or not? Is it time varying or not? How do you do that? Like when Vn1 is your input, try to think, if I scale Vn1, what happens to the output? If I shift Vn1, what happens to the output? Assuming in Vn2 is a fixed sinusoid. Amen? Try to imagine what's going to happen to the output. Similarly here, try to think, if I change scale Vn2, and if I shift Vn2, what will happen to the output? And accordingly, give me your findings, whether this is linear or not, time invariant or not, linear or not, time invariant or not. Amen? Think for it, think about it for a couple of minutes, and then we come back to answer. See how to address this conceptually, not mathematically. So simple, let's think of the two signals. Now let's have our Vn1. Tamam? Let's imagine that Vn2, for example, looks like this. Uh, yani I'm trying to make it sinusoid, so forgive me if it's not the same amplitude. Tamam? Now what's going to happen? Okay, Let's say this is Vn1. One, so this is Vn2. Okay. Let's look at the first system. Okay. If I hold Vn1, right, and I increase or decrease its amplitude, okay. what's going to happen to the output? Nothing. nothing. So scaling the input amplitude, lay nothing. Because the effect in the end is from The effect comes from where does it cut to zero, right? Because these are the points where it's going to switch on, and then down, switch off, and then up, switch on, without doing anything to the output other than chopping the input. Okay? So if I scale Vn1, 
if I multiply it by a factor, make the amplitude bigger, nothing is going to change to the output, which means that it violates the linearity. Then the linearity between if you scale the input, the output should scale with the same value. Azbut. So now it's non-linear, for sure. Now let's look at what happens in terms of time invariance. If I shift this signal a little bit, does the corresponding effect is that I'm going to have the exact same shape of signal at the output, but shifted, or the shape of the signal is going to change? The shape is going to change. Why? Because the basically, I'm going to cut this part from the signal before the shift, and then take also this part at the output, so this part, and this part at the output. And the last one is going to be, uh, this went a little bit further for me. So anyways, assume yani, this part, okay? Now, if I do a shift, what will happen? Those parts are gonna change, right? If I shift this signal to the right or to the left, these are gonna be probably something from here to here, and then something else from here to here. The shape of the output is different now. It's not the same, but simply shifted. It will have a different shape. تمام؟ بمعنى كده ان السيستم this system is time varying. It does not possess the time invariance property. طيب. ده for the first one. For the second one. Also non Again, go back to the same drawing, but imagine that you are scaling this one and you are shifting this one and keep this fixed. تمام؟ Similarly, when you shift, you will get the same effect because the parts that you cut are going to be different. So it's definitely time varying. Okay? But when you scale, it's going to simply scale the output. And if you imagine that you have two signals, the red one and another one, for example, yellow or brown or whatever, and you add them together, right? And you look at the output, it's going to be simply the output of the first one added to it, the output of the second one. So it satisfies the two properties without calculating, just by imagining the behavior of the system. Okay? So the second system is linear, but it is time varying. The first system is, so this one is linear, but it is time varying. تمام? While this one is non-linear, and it is also time varying. Yes? How is the second system time varying? Imagine that you shift this. Keep this fixed, and you shift this. What will happen to the other? It will be different shape, right? Okay. Any questions, any other questions, yeah, Shabab, about testing for linearity and time invariance? But you don't need to test, just imagining whether your system is linear or time invariant or not. Again, uh, the solution is written here in a more neat way. Now. In the second uh, system, yes. like whenever we make a shift in the input, like that, that will be reflected in the output. Maybe like it will be cut from like different place. Different, yes. But uh, we'll still have. No, you will not have a shift in the output. A shift in the output means the signal looks the same but moved in time. What you will get in the output is a totally different look for the signal because it took different signals from the cosine. Yes, so this is time invariance because, for example, if like the first part. Let me just tell you one thing. If you are assuming a very special case, like having two signals that don't have frequency, it will look as if. Even in this case, it will not look shifted. Just to remind you, for example, if like the first segment, when V and one is one, if the input is the is the peak, it's the output will also be the peak. If we shift the the input, and we made like in the first segment here, the first segment, like peak. It's not going to be the peak. It's going to be another part other than the peak. Yes. Time, خلاص. That's not that's not time shifting. That's a completely different system at the out signal at the output. Right? صح? Look at this. If the output looks like this, this part, and then zero, and then this part, for example. تمام? If you shift this, it should look exactly the same, but shifted in time. However, in our case, it's not going to be that. It's going to be that the next output, when you do the shift, is going to be probably this part, and a zero, and maybe a zero for a while, right? And then another part of the dropping. Maybe the peak or after the peak. So the shape of the signal is not the same anymore. It's not simply shifted. What you are talking about is that it took shifted parts from the original signal. But it's not the original, it's not the original output shift. 
the frequency, the frequency of Bn1, it should be like uh, time invariant. Increase it until when? Like, we make it like very high because. So so very high, yani up to the level that it will take everything? Well, uh, almost everything. Like almost everything, you are almost time invariant. <laughs> It's not, but I'm almost everything you are almost time invariant. Um, let's look at uh, this, this just for demonstration, and I, I'm not going to ask you to do it. But this shows you when you look at the full system with the example where you have the input uh, 1 as a1 cosine omega 1t and v input 2 as a2 cosine 1.25. So there is a relation. One of them is one quarter higher in frequency, right? And then it asks you to draw the output just for demonstration to understand how the circuit works. So there's not much in, in terms of doing this other than uh, really figuring out um, how to operate on such a circuit. And the reason for that is that later on we are going to use this circuit a lot, especially when you talk about mixers, right? And we will show uh, in a few slides uh, why it matters when you talk about mixers. Amen? Another important thing to mention is kind of summarizing quickly what are the bad effects of time varying systems and what are the bad effects of non-linearities in systems. This slide is discussing uh, the bad effects of time varying systems. If you have a system which is time varying, the end result of that is if you put a single sinusoid to the input of that signal, even though it's linear, but it is time varying. If you put a single sinusoid to that system, the output from the system is not going to be a single sinusoid. It's going to be a different, it's not going to be the same sinusoid with the same frequency, but only shifted. It's going to be a different sinusoid component due to the time varying property of the signal. And the example here um, shows you how the time varying property of the sorry the time varying property of the system not the signal shows you how the time varying property of the system can affect the output by producing more harmonics than the actual input signal right? imagine that you have a system which is represented by s of t and you have the output from that system which is equal to the input multiplied by the response of the system, not the impulse response. Yeah, damage convolution. Okay, so it's or imagine that these are two signals, for example. Okay? Now, if S of t is a periodic signal, okay, uh, for example, this one, the N two is something here which has a frequency response that looks like this, band limited around zero, and the other one is some periodic uh, pulse, okay? If you multiply this by this in time domain, this is equivalent to doing what in frequency domain? Convolution, right? If you go to the frequency domain representation of this one, it's this. And the other one, which is the periodic square wave, is going to be represented as? Pulses. Pulses, best? Pulses, what? عليهم sync function مظبوط؟ so in order to represent this in frequency domain the square produces a sync function yes. and because of the periodicity of the signal you get the impulses multiplied by that as a sync function right so that's what you get deltas multiplied by sync function مظبوط؟ okay so now when you do the convolution of something with deltas multiplied by a sync function the convolutions are going to result in the signal and the signal, the signal and represented the, at the exactly at the locations of the, the, the pulses, the, pulses. The, sync, the, the delta, right? Okay, which means that the output, if you look at it, is going to be the original input signal produced again at other frequencies but with decaying amplitudes. Yeah. Now, this is a representation of how extra harmonics can be produced. Later on, we will show that the time invariability is going to do a very similar effect of producing more harmonics. So this does not show the time variability itself. It just shows you that harmonics can be produced by going through something that has deltas, right? And then later on, we will see that a time invariant 
system, a time varying nice. system, is going to produce those harmonic because the impulse response of that system is going to have, yeah. if you can represent the impulse, it's going to have some delta functions among it, amongst it. Okay. The other effect, in addition to time invariance, is the nonlinearity. Now, nonlinearity is more severe because it produces three bad effects. It can produce extra harmonics. So you can put an input with a certain frequency range. You get in the output replicas of the input at other frequency ranges. It can also produce something called compression of the gain. And it can produce another effect called blocking. So compression means that because of the extra produced harmonics and interference from other signals, your amplifiers saturate and they start producing less gains at the output. Blockage is even severe. If you have very high interference, you can find that the output from your amplifier of the original signal is going to go to zero. And we'll show that kind of mathematically, but roughly, not completely, in the coming lecture, inshallah. So we'll discuss the effects of nonlinearity and time invariance in more details starting next lecture, inshallah. Any questions today? I think we finished a little bit early, but we're fine. Any questions? Yes. Could we lose something for the people? Yes, yes, yes. We're going to leave the people. The people who are supposed to do the people. If we have a guest, we don't need to do the people. So just, Allah will give you the guest. Could we lose some information of the signal? Like, what's the difference of certain bandwidth? If we take certain bandwidth, we can also imagine that